and welcome to episode 23 of Monster Kid Radio, the podcast where we celebrate the classic and sometimes not so classic genre cinema of yesteryear. I'm your host and producer, Derek M. Cook, and I want to welcome you to this week's episodes. I'm really excited about what we've got cooked up this week because I've got somebody on the podcast who's a dear friend of mine. I've been wanting to get him on a podcast for years. His name is Tom Beagler. He's a friend. He's an artist. He's a fan of monster movies. He's a grown-up monster kid, and he's bringing a movie called Matongo to the Monster Kid Radio podcast this week, which you're going to hear me say I've never seen before, but this is something that he's seen more than once, and I went over to his place. We camped out in his home theater. We watched the movie, and I'm excited. I'm excited to share the conversation that happened before and after with everybody here. But before I get to all of that, let's go ahead and handle the business of this episode. Now, the music that you heard at the beginning of the show is from the band King Ghidra. The song is called Pacific City. You can find out more about King Ghidra at a couple of different places. You can go to their Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash king.ghidra.rock. And that's Ghidra as in the King Ghidra kaiju monster kind of thing. G-H-I-D-O-R-A dot rock. Of course, you can also find them over at Reverb Nation if you just do a search for King Ghidra or head over to our website at monsterkidradio.net. There will be a link in the show notes going to these various pages. Of course, as always, if you download or support any of the bands that you hear on Monster Kid Radio, let them know that Monster Kid Radio sent you, would you? Also on our website is our contact information. Our email address is monsterkidradio at gmail.com. Our voicemail line is 503-4795-MKR. Of course, we're also on Facebook. We have a page that a lot of you have liked on Facebook. I really appreciate the likes. If you haven't already done so and you are a Facebook user, please consider looking up Monster Kid Radio and liking us on Facebook. Now, we also have a Facebook group that if you join, you can take part in the various polls and various conversations happening between Monster Kid Radio listeners between episodes. So feel free to join the group. I'll approve your join request, typically within a few hours, and I'll see you over there. Also, big thanks to everybody who has voted for us over in the iTunes store. I really appreciate all the ratings everybody's given us, and of course, we want more. So if you are an iTunes user, please consider giving us a review on iTunes. Not only does it help us fine-tune the show and make it better based on your reviews, but it also helps us in terms of iTunes placement or whatever. I don't know how iTunes does that. Does Steve Jobs still have something? It doesn't matter. I appreciate everybody's support in iTunes, on Facebook, and everywhere else. Now, I am active on a few message boards. I sometimes post about new episodes of Monster Kid Radio on some of these boards, like the Universal Monster Army or the Classic Horror Film Board. If there are any other message boards out there that you think users would like to hear about Monster Kid Radio or that I should just check out personally, drop me an email and let me know. I'll go check them out. Of course, you can always talk about Monster Kid Radio anywhere you go online or in person. The more listeners, the merrier. Especially since next episode, I've got a contest coming up for a unique piece of artwork. Something that you are not going to find anywhere else other than Monster Kid Radio. Something made specifically for Monster Kid Radio. So you want to get people checking out the podcast this week. Or maybe you don't because it might improve your chances. But, you know, I think the more people who play along, the better. You're going to hear that song from King Ghidra at the very end of the episode after part one of our conversation with Tom right about now. Attack of the Mushroom People, Matango. This is a movie that I have not seen, and I was invited over to my friend's house to watch it in their home theater. Tom is an amazing artist who did the sculpture that looks like a radio sign, Monster Kid Radio with a little monster hand. So it's pretty cool. And when he said he wanted to watch Matango, I jumped at the chance because I've never seen this movie. Is this, this is a favorite movie of yours? It's one of my guilty pleasures. This is one that I actually watched first time probably 18 years ago. Wow. I actually found it at uh, somewhere I think you've been, which is uh, Movie Madness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is, I think, down on Belmont Avenue mm-hmm. in Portland. Yeah, that was back in the days way before Amazon or or any of the online stuff. Yeah, and I watched it this so was many years ago. And then I just happened to watch it uh, about three months ago. Mm-hmm. And I just uh, decided it was a movie that I thought Derek should see. <laughs> so I had to invite him over. So here he is. <laughs> Sounds like perfect Monster Kid Radio fodder. And especially good for me because a lot of people know I don't have a lot of experience with these Japanese horror movies. The, the Toho films, the Godzilla era. I've caught up on a lot of the kaiju, but this isn't giant monsters, is it? No, this is actually a real 
atmospheric take. Um, there are quote unquote monsters, but they're not large. In fact, okay. they're, they're human size or smaller. The main thing about this is it just it's a real subtle and kind of a downbeat tale, which um, you'll find out as we start the movie. But it's I think it's well worth watching. Is there anything I should be paying attention to, looking out for when we start the movie? Well, <laughs> this movie has a little bit of everything, as you'll find out. It has some uh, interesting singing with um, singing. a couple songs in here that one of the characters sings. A lady, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name right now. But uh, one is, uh, she sings a whole song and she only hums all the lyrics. <laughs> um, there's a couple of strange uh, hypnotic scenes where, uh, well, of course... Matango, uh, the mushroom people. There's a little to do with some hallucinations, and um, that's it. Let's just watch it. Sounds like a plan to me, man. Let's let's start this thing. Psychiatric ward. Yes, I know that. And you think that I'm insane? some kind of nuclear research. She certainly wasn't an ordinary research vessel. Anyway, we better figure out what we're going to do. Oh, another one! The island is a ship's graveyard. Huh? Maybe the current. It drags them off course, and they smash themselves against the rock. Scene like that. That is a. Uh, Did it just disappear? Akiko, it's your mother.
Give up. Even if we fix the yacht, we can't live long without food. I'm going to go look for some. I check on the right, it was hot stuff in 63. Issue of popular stuff. Hmm. Why don't you knock before you come in? I'm going to take these. Huh? We can't trust you now. <laughs> And you're going to sleep and eat for the rest of us. I don't sleep very well, except by myself. You're going to live and work for the rest of us, too. Damn you. All right, 10,000 each. Not enough. No, uh -huh. yesterday it was 5,000. The market for eggs won't last forever now, will it? Everybody wants me. <laughs> Do anything you like. Oh, I will. Well, uh, truthfully. I like Akiko better than the other one. So after I've killed you all... It's raining for a whole week now. It must be the rainy season. Well, if you're right, we won't be able to live here very long. This movie was awesome. Told you. <laughs> this was really cool. No, so when we're watching the movie, and I think you said this at the beginning, this movie's got a little bit of everything, and it really does. I mean, it's all super suspenseful, but it almost has the makings of a, a musical at the very beginning. <laughs> That's true. You know, it's kind of comedy like. It's Gilligan's Island after some bad sushi. It's, <laughs> exactly. It was really awesome. I really enjoyed this movie. Now you said. That you first discovered it on VHS, but this is based on a short story. Yeah, this is based on a short story by William Hope Hodgson. Um, he lived in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. Okay. He wrote, I think, five or six novels, many, many short stories. A lot of them were sea-based, ocean-based. That This was based on was The Voice in the Night, and it was uh, published in 1907 Okay, in the Blue Magazine. Which I have never heard of, but how does a short story written by an Englishman? I don't know. I don't know much about him, but he's not Japanese. So <laughs> how does a movie not. like or, or like this movie get made out of a short story that's not from you know the, the island of Japan? I, it just how does it jump over that? That's fascinating to me. Well, it's interesting because the short story really doesn't have a whole lot in common with the movie itself. Oh, okay. Basically, the fungus is the same. Um, the becalmed the boat is the same. Basically, in the short story, um, it's basically about two guys on a schooner with a small crew. They hit a real calm spot that's real foggy and misty. In the mist, they hear a rowboat come up. Okay, but it stays out of the just out of their sight. They want him to come closer because they want to see who's there. He refuses to come closer, just saying, "I can't get any closer." They eventually get into a conversation with the guy. Um, it turns out it's fairly obvious the guy is shipwrecked. Okay. He's starving. In the conversation, he brings up that there's a lady who needs their help also and needs basically his provisions. So they end up giving him just a box of provisions. He leaves or paddles away, basically. And then <laughs> uh, a few hours later... He shows up again. He paddles up next door, and they engage him again in conversation. At this point, he doesn't really want to let them know 
anything about what's going on with him. He seems like he wants to keep all this a secret. Okay. And then when he comes up the second time, he makes a comment that he's discussed this with his wife or his, I think it's his wife. And they've decided that God sent them these people with these provisions. And since they sent them there, they should hear the story of how this happened to this couple. And then it goes into, just in the movie, which we'll discuss in a minute, it goes back to the, the to his story. Okay. Which starts off with the, the couple and another crew on a, on a separate boat. They're out at the sea. The boat starts to sink. And, and the crew, while well, the couple's downstairs gathering their belongings, the crew takes the lifeboat and leaves and leaves them there. Oh. So, of course, they're a little dismayed. Yeah, um, a little. But they seem to be doing okay. They, you know, they're pretty level-headed. They go up on deck. They string together some stuff. They make a raft. They get their provisions they can, and they take off before the boat capsizes. Basically, they go to a uh, where they find a derelict ship. Okay. A, a larger boat that's covered with fungus. Okay. They figure out that really this fungus is just so bad they can't stay there. But it's close enough to an island that they can take the small raft to this island. And this island is covered with this fungus also. But there's just one small spot, this one beach, that there no fungus grows. So okay. they land there on their raft. I know this is uh, the totally different. Yeah, this, this is totally not what we just saw. <laughs> and they're doing, you know, they stay there. They pitch a couple tents and everything's going pretty good. You know, they have provisions for a while and everything's fine. And then after, uh, I think, a couple weeks, the, the husband looks at the wife and he, he notices that she has a little gray patch on her face. Okay. Actually, it may be on her elbow. Excuse me. They wash it off with some antiseptic, but they kind of know that this fungus invades everything. Mm. So they wash it off. The next day, it's back again. Okay. And then at the same time, they notice the husband has a similar growth on Uh. it. So basically, they live as they can. They know at this point. That there's nothing they can do against the fungus, so... But we don't necessarily want to spoil the short story if it's different than the movie, right? Correct. Right. So, it sounds like there was a lot of liberties taken here uh, to get the short story to the movie. You know, you keep mentioning the fungus and, like, what's going on and this mysterious stuff and all that. I'm watching this movie and I'm thinking it sounds very... It feels very Lovecraftian to me. And I know that Hodgson is kind of known in various Lovecraft circles as somebody who might have written some fiction that kind of fits in that kind of weird category. So that at least came across. (laughs) But uh, yeah, that sounds totally different. And then you said it's also been adapted before. Like this isn't the first time this story has been turned into a movie or something? This was a second adaptation of this. is the Matango. In 1958, there was a series, which I don't recall seeing, excuse me, it was called Suspicion. Okay. It was produced by Alfred Hitchcock. I think it only had a run of about 23 or 24 episodes. Huh. But there was an episode called Voice in the Night, which had some pretty impressive actors in it at the time. It had Barbara Rush, James Donald, Patrick McNee, which everybody knows from the Avengers, and James Coburn. (laughs) Which sounds awesome. So, but, you know, I'm sure that's based on the short story and not as much on the movie, which we'll discuss how it's (laughs) so totally different. Though still... Real atmospheric. I mean, I I think they both have a similar tone, just a real negative kind of uh, claustrophobic tone to them. Did you see the episode of Suspicion? I mean, is it available anywhere? I have been looking, and I can't find it. I get on a lot of sites that say you can watch it for free. (laughs) And then I get on those sites, and I think I should probably get off that site. Yeah. (laughs) You can watch it for free if you register with this and send us your email address and click on this link. No. That's correct. So, yeah. no, but I've been looking. I looked. It's not on Netflix. Um, huh. I looked on Amazon. I couldn't find it. So. I'm not even familiar with the series. That sounds like something I need to check out because I love Hitchcock. It sounds very good. A lot of good actors and actresses in it. But as far as this movie goes. Yes. <laughs> you've read the short story, it sounds like? Or at least yeah, I just read it. I, I okay. just read it uh, today, even though it doesn't seem like it. But yeah, I just read it. It was good. But, oh, and speaking of the short story. Yeah, yeah. But um, I did go on. When I was looking for the... The short story, of course, you can read it, but I got on YouTube. Yeah. And there is, if you if you look up Voice in the Night, Michael G., and type that in YouTube. 
Okay. There's a real nice audio adaptation of the story. Okay. It's about 35 minutes long. It's not a real long story. It's it's fairly short, but it, they do a really nice job. So if somebody just, you know, is too lazy to read, <laughs> just wants to get on, sit there and listen to it, they, they do a nice job. So I'd recommend that. Voice in the Night, Michael G. And is it G spelled out or just the initial no, G? No, just Michael G. G. Small, small G. I will find that and put a link in the show notes to this episode over at modsecuradio.net so people can check that out. Awesome. Because like you said, if they're too lazy to read, they can have it read to them, <laughs> or they can watch the movie, but Tango. Ah. Yeah. So we don't necessarily want to give it all away. No. Because, I mean, I feel like this is one that it, it was totally off my radar for a couple of different reasons. I wasn't familiar with it at all, really, before you mentioned it, other than I knew there were people in mushroom suits. Uh, <laughs> so I don't think we should give too much away, because I think people need to see it. Uh, when did it come out? It actually came out in 1963. Okay. It was directed by Ishiro Honda, which... Wow, Mr. Godzilla. Mr. I mean, Godzilla, he did the bazillion of those Godzilla, Rodan, Mothra, Godzilla well, yeah. versus all those. You can't think of classic Toho without thinking about about him. So, And this is a Toho production. Correct. You know, we talked at the beginning of this, I was expecting giant monsters or something. There are some giant things in here, I suppose, giant mushroom things, giant <laughs> compared to where they start from. But no, I mean, this is... This is about the people. This is a human drama. This is. This is exactly correct. This is a lot less about the monsters and more about how people get to this point. I mean, you kept saying it was moody and it was atmospheric, and it definitely is. Uh, you know, it's it shot. It's kind of all over the place. I mean, it starts, like I said, it almost feels like a musical, and there is that little quote-unquote musical number. It's very bright. It's very colorful. La, 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 la. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, the stuff at the very beginning with the boat at sea, I suppose you could tell at this point that this is a Toho production because it's clearly a miniature, and it's clearly a miniature in a wave tank. You kind of get used to seeing the water, the miniaturized water oh, yeah. used for yeah. sea. So you see some of that, and, and you know the boat's on a big set somewhere when they're going through the storm. But, I mean, there's a group of people that are out, I guess, pleasure yachting. They, they've rented a yacht. It or, seems like, yeah, yeah. And they're a pretty divergent group. You got a professor, you got a writer, you got a... A pop star, I guess, a musician, uh, a singer, actress. Singer, that student, a... Oh, some of the others. an entrepreneur, I think, is one yeah. of them. Just kind of a rich guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then the guy who runs the boats and the, the skipper, quote-unquote. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a nice group of people. It's a cross-section. It's very Gilligan's Island-like. Very much. You know, the professor, there's Marianne. Well, guy even who has a hat, just yeah. like Gilligan. Exactly. The writer wears a hat, just like Gilligan. <laughs> and as a writer myself, I, I would be very upset if somebody knocked my manuscript pages into the ocean. <laughs> pages and pages into the ocean. Oh, man. They're all just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you work too much. Ha, 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 ha. I mean, you even, you even said that was months of my work gone. Oh. But and then the storm comes. Yes. And, which is kind of our inciting factory, or our inciting incident. It kind of takes over the story. It's no longer a pleasure cruise. The three-hour tour is becoming something much longer <laughs> than, right. than that. It was a pretty intense storm sequence. I mean, it, it does go on a little long. It tossed that little boat around like crazy. It really did. It took them way off course, wherever they uh -huh. were going. They were nowhere near Japan by the time they were done. <laughs> and it tore up that boat. And I, I was, like I said, it ran a little long, but I really felt like it was a, a an intense storm. I mean, I bought that mm -hmm. whatever happened to this boat, I believed it because the storm was pretty bad. It was bad. Uh, it tore the mast off, wrecked the sails. Everybody survived. Everybody survived. A little waterlogged, I suppose. <laughs> knocked out the radio, and they end up on this little unnamed island. That's correct. Yeah. This is where the movie starts to get a little weird. So this is when it starts to get into more dark territory. Yeah. It, bit. It's no longer this kind of, you know, happy adventure ride kind of thing. It's, it's dark. It's weird. There are some weird things that happen. Like some hallucinations start happening right off the bat. <laughs> hallucinations or dreams or something. Even before they start meeting any mushroom things. They start having these these visions. I'm referring to the the one guy who's out on deck, and he sees the big boat coming. Certainly. What what was up with that? I have no idea. It was bearing down on him, and I don't not <laughs> not. <laughs> there are a couple things in this movie, and you made a comment here that there are some things that aren't explained, some things that just start to happen or, or commented on that they never really go back to. There's no callback to it. When they get inside uh, another boat, another ship mm -hmm. that's covered in fungus, 
they walk into one room and it's completely different colored fungus. Mm-hmm. And they go out of their way to make sure they point that out. Notice it's a different color. But then it never comes up again. <laughs> and the chemicals seem to react to fungus. Yes. But yes. that doesn't seem to matter in the in the end. In no. the story. Yeah. How do you feel about that with with having these things that are just kind of thrown out there and then they never go back to them again? I don't have that big of a problem with it. I mean, okay. I, of course, I'd rather have everything make sense. I think anybody would. Mm-hmm. But you kind of notice it and go on. I don't want to have it spoil my trip. Right. No, and I actually agree with you in this case. Because I feel like you, you're saying it's a darker, more negative, kind of a, a heavier. It's a horror movie. This is a monster movie, but it's a horror movie. It's not like the the kaiju films from Toho. This is moody, it's atmospheric, it's kind of scary for some of the characters. And to have some of these things come up that don't make sense and then never revisit them again, that just kind of adds to the mystery for me in this one. Oh. So I was okay with that. Although, I would like to know why the guy pre-mushroom is hallucinating, but <laughs> you know, maybe it was just in the air. That's, that's what I thought, maybe in the mist. Well, it, it is fungus. fungus, there's spores. That's true. You know, so. We spent a lot of time on this island, too. I mean, they, they are stranded here. And, they are stranded. You know, they're trying to survive. They're talking about finding food. Uh, they can't find food. There's there's no... They find some canned food, but it's a very limited resource. Yes. Not like the bullets, which apparently <laughs> which they have on, on. <laughs> uh, one, one of our guys find, uh, has a gun, a rifle. Yeah, he found a gun and he cleaned it up on this from the fungus boat. Yes, <laughs> the fungus boat. <laughs> uh, I do like that every time he fires a gun, anybody fires a gun, they've got to fire it like three times to make sure it really gets their point <laughs> across. And nobody seems to mind that they keep firing these bullets. <laughs> they're, they're running out of food, but bullets, whatever. Did you have one or two characters out of the batch that you were rooting for the most? Like you want this person to survive or that guy can go off and eat the mushrooms. It doesn't matter. Well, see, that's kind of the thing about this movie, which we haven't really talked to any yeah. plot. But, you know, at the beginning... There's a scene with the professor mm-hmm. actually in an insane asylum. Ah, that's true. Okay. So, I did kind of skip over this. this well, is, yeah, so we're kind of losing our Yeah, let's, let's get back to that. It does start with this kind of opening narration with a survivor telling his story. Yeah, that's actually Akira Kubo. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, hey. <laughs> you, you've got the pad right there in front of I've you. Got I'm gonna trust you. <laughs> I got the words in front of me, but I don't know if I can say them. He's been in a lot of Godzilla Toho mm-hmm. stuff. Um, yeah, he basically he's the movie starts off with him in a. It looks like a psychiatric ward. There's bars that they're containing him, and it seems strange that they would. I'm sure it was intentional. They have a huge picture window in his cell that shows <laughs> Tokyo with all the neon. Uh-huh. And my, you know, my feeling is that that was intentional just to show the juxtaposition of the city compared to the quiet life of a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can see that. It, it is odd that if they've got somebody who is obviously behind bars, yeah. <laughs> you know, he is being restrained or, uh, you know, locked up. He's institutionalized. Big plate glass window. Let's look at Tokyo. <laughs> and it's a great model of Tokyo. I mean, I'm sure it's one they would use later in a Godzilla film. Oh, yeah, beautiful. It, it looked great. But yeah, he's the one telling the story. Yes. So all of this could be you know, maybe an unreliable narration kind of thing. You know, Maybe what happened out there, or at least what we're being told, didn't really happen. So that adds another level of mystery. Yes, yeah, he does seem a little delusional at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, he's not like, it seems like he's been through a lot, so... You don't really know for sure. Right. Which, you know, could be the Lovecraftian thing kind of creeping into, you know, it's a weird story. And I mean, they are eating mushrooms, which is going to mess with everybody. So, uh, but, College days. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so he's the one telling the story and then he's the one that tells us about the boat. And, yes. You know, the pleasure cruise and yes. the, the song, <laughs> the musical number, la, 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 la. the storm, the shipwreck. And, and really the bulk of the story is how do they survive on the island? Yes. I mean, that's really where the plot yes. is. And that's where a lot of the conflict, you know, that's part of it is the the mushrooms are obviously a part of it, the mushroom guys. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is just the conflict between the people that are left. You know, there's a lot of sexual tension and a lot of, right. <laughs> I mean, there's just tension all over with these people that were yes. initially uh, appeared to be pretty good friends. They all they seem to get along for the most part. I mean, there's a little bit, when the storm came, maybe the skipper, maybe feeling a little like, well, they kind of look down at us because yeah. they're one, but... That kind of falls away when they get to the island, and then things start to break down again. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the sexual tension. There's two women. One is the uh, the singer. That is Kumi Mizuno. 
Well done, sir. Oh, oh. I'm sure. <laughs> Do you have the other one there? I am looking. It is Miki Yashiro. Nice. So one is a radio star. I think we even heard on a radio that they find that the news report is kind of going through the list of all the people who are missing. And she's mentioned as this, you know, international star of, <laughs> yeah. of stage and screen and radio, even though the only thing we ever hear her sing is that la 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 song. <laughs> but it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, and she's wonderful. The, the world's loss, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some sexual tension there. And the professor, is he the one that kind of isolates himself? He kind of wants to sleep in a separate room because he doesn't sleep with No, I others. think that wasn't the professor. No, that wasn't the professor. That was the... Uh, owner? Maybe the owner. owner. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was uh, Yoshi... <laughs> You're killing me, Derek. <laughs> that is <laughs> Yoshio... <laughs> uh, Derek's going to help me with this one. Yoshio T. So Yoshio T. Uh, was it Chuyo or something like that? And of course, we mean no offense. These are just words outside of our culture. We don't know. Yeah. But he's, he, he's the one that isolates himself. It almost feels like he's the one that's kind of cracking first. To me, anyway. That was what my takeaway was. I think that's... He was the one that was kind of not yeah. as well hinged. Although everybody eventually <laughs> kind of loses it. Yeah, I think basically the professor is about the only one that until he eats... Well, until the Things end. happen. Yeah. But yeah, all of them seem to go through <laughs> a fairly large uh, large spectrum of uh, <laughs> emotions yeah. on this on this pleasure cruise. So, <laughs> Are we going to keep going on a pleasure cruise even though they've kind of shipwrecked at this point? Still not that bad. No. No. no, no, no. Well, plenty of mushroom seed, I guess. And <laughs> they do find a little bit of food, and they, they do say there's plenty of water. Water? Roots? They go hunting every once in a while, but I never saw them come back with... No. Like any kind of game or anything. It's all roots and I guess maybe they scraped a few things off some rocks, but I think the log said something about the ship's log that there was very little wildlife, very right. little vegetation that was edible. But do not eat the mushrooms. This was a log they found on the fungus ship that you call it. Uh the the ship that's just wrecked on the beach and it's covered in fungus. It is it's not just like a light dusting, it is thick. They have to wipe it away and it's kind of gross. It is gross, and that's one of the things I like about this movie is just the sets and everything are just so dank and creepy and, you know, I don't want to say Giger-esque. That gives me that same feeling. I could get that, especially on the fungus ship. That's correct. That's it what is I, so so dusty and musty. And, and you have and, some of the barnacles, you know, that kind of give yeah. the walls some shape a little bit. Moist and not in a good way. <laughs> you know, just, ugh. So, I, no, I, I think... Guy Grace, I think, is probably fair. I mean, there's a little bit of that to it. Yeah, well, at least a dusting. A, dust- <laughs> a dusting of Giger. I could see that. I could see that. Uh, and the camera work kind of played to that, too, because the cameras are all placed at these odd angles at times. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just a straightforward camera shot, you know, two shot with a talking head here or whatever. The cameras are placed very strategically, especially down the hallways and such. Oh, yeah. Or when they're going up and down the ladder. I mean, it, it looks great. Uh, and, and as far as the, the rest of the plot goes, it is, as Tom said, everybody kind of goes through their own little drama in terms of how they're dealing with what's happened to them. Uh, you've got the sexual tension and you've got, you know, one person who is trying to break away from the group and the skipper is starting to assert some control because he didn't feel like he had it before. And uh, you got the one guy hoarding food and, and somebody else is buying they find turtle eggs. <laughs> they, they find they turtle eggs. One piece of protein, yet they find, they find the turtle eggs. And the professor or the owner, excuse me, who's got all the money, is, yes. is buying... 200,000 yen yes, buying for those turtle eggs. more than his share of turtle eggs <laughs> from the guy who finds them. Which wasn't that many, but I don't know how much 200,000 yen I, I don't know what that translates to. 63, I don't know. Sounds like a lot. Sounds impressive. <laughs> it, I suppose, gave him a little bit more incentive to get off the island alive so he can go spend it. That's right. Did, didn't really work out no, for many of them. No, didn't work out. I mean, not not to spoil it too much, but there's a reason why there's one guy giving the story. You know, in the cell at the beginning as opposed to the group. Is there anything else about the plot you want to kind of touch on? Or I hate to talk about it too much almost, which is a, a good out for me. That way I don't have to... Uh, 
just so people know, I'm just going to mention this. I'm, <laughs> I have this delightful quirk where I don't like recording my own voice, and I will probably never listen to this <laughs> podcast. But I'm doing this because Derek's a good friend, and I love these old movies. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get over this strange <laughs> phobia I have. But I, I, I really think this is one worth watching, and I, I hate to almost tell too much. And in fact, that. That's one of the interesting things about um, preparing to do this, because I, I tried to do a teeny bit of research, and I actually found out that, uh, and I mentioned to Derek, that on uh, archive.org, you can watch Matango in its entirety in the, with the uh, subtitles. Mm -hmm. It's actually under uh, Mushroom Attack. <laughs> <laughs> and when you, when you click it up, there's a George Carlin video above it for some reason. You have to go, you have to go down to the next one. But it's there in its entirety, so I would recommend anybody that can get online, watch the darn thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good flick. I will find a link to Mushroom Attack and put that in the show notes over at monsterkidradio.net. Awesome. So it's subtitled on archive.org. We watched it dubbed. Do you have a preference when it comes to these movies? Do you prefer dubbed versus subtitle? Dubbed is always the easiest. Sure. But you always lose so much because so much of acting is the voice. And and so often the dubbing is, a lot of times it almost gives it a comical yeah. tone for some of these. Sure, yeah. yeah, and and in a movie like Attack of the Mushroom People, it's so dank and you know it, I I just think it's the little bit I watched with subtitles I think I like better just because okay. you you got more of the the gravity of the acting right. So have you watched it in its entirety subtitle? I have not. Okay. I've watched it twice in the last. Well, I watch, actually I've watched it three times in the last in the last three months, and that's all I'm going to watch it, Derek. Oh, okay. So you're done. You're <laughs> I'm filled done. Up. I'm done. I've hit my quota. I'm good. No more mushrooms for me. Yeah, I think I'm. Uh, you're, you're but good I like. It. I'll watch it again in a few years. Sure. You know, that's what I do. I put them away, and then when I feel like I want to watch it, I'll throw it in there. You know, that's the thing about. You know, as monster kids and, and people who love these old movies, is that we end up with these massive movie collections. <laughs> we watch the movie once, and even if it's not something that we absolutely adore, if it's got somebody or something in it that we like, we were going to hold on to it because, you know, maybe someday I want to go back and watch that Lon Chaney Jr. movie. <laughs> you know, I want to go back and watch that film here, you know, with, with that one giant monster, you know, and, you know, next time you pull it off the shelf, it's all covered in dust or fungus. <laughs> that's right. And then, you know, you got to blow it off and put it back in, but that's all right. I mean, I, yeah. I'm glad to have it. I have a copy now, and yeah. I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch it. And subtitle i'm going to check out the extra features uh the, the special features on there I, I really enjoyed the movie we're going to come back here in a couple of days for part two of our conversation with tom beagler and our reaction to the movie matango had a lot of fun at recording with Tom and hanging out in his home theater and watching this movie with him. He is a gracious guest, a wonderful guy, and a big old monster kid just like us. So just to hang out and watch a movie with a like-minded soul was awesome. Thank you to Tom for making this episode happen. And again, you guys and gals will hear the rest of that conversation in part two here in a couple of days. Also in a couple of days, you're going to hear me play a round of the Classic Five with... Dr. Gang Green, a.k.a. Larry Underwood. He's going to join us for a quick round of the game in which I ask five random questions about classic monster movies. We'll see how he did. And like I said, we have the contest. So make sure you come back to monsterkidradio.net or keep us locked in on iTunes or Stitcher Radio on your mobile phones. Monster Kid Radio is a registered service mark of Monster Kid Radio, LLC. All original content of Monster Kid Radio by Monster Kid Radio, LLC is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivations, 3.0, unported license. Of course, that does not extend to the song Pacific City from the band King Ghidra. It appears on this episode of Monster Kid Radio by permission of the band. Talk to you in a couple of days. Yeah.